Joining me now on the subject of Gaza's energy crisis is Dr. Martin Sherman, director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, as well as a prolific researcher on diplomatic and security issues. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Sherman. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so my first question is simply put, will Gaza's reduction in electricity by 40% lead to a humanitarian crisis? Well, let me put it this way. What you're seeing in Gaza now is the ultimate indictment of the imbecilic idea of two states for two people. Um, it probably will lead to a humanitarian crisis, but nothing can avoid a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. And the attempts to try and sustain Gaza more or less in the format that we've known up to now is a terrible mistake and will continue to wreak tragedy and deprivation on the Arabs there. And um, I personally have advocated for a long time that Israel shouldn't wait for the Palestinian Authority to ask it to withdraw services from Gaza. This should be an initiative on the part of Israel to withdraw utilities and services from an enemy entity and offer non-belligerence a way out, uh, mainly by uh, very generous relocation loans in third-party countries to remove the non-belligerent population from the circle of violence that their corrupt and cruel cliques who control their lives for decades have wrought upon them time and time again. Well, that kind of brings me to you know to my another to my further question is that is you know who's responsible ultimately for the Palestinians who are living in Gaza and the West Bank? I mean, you know, the Palestinian Authority is an administrative body ultimately, and you have uh, Israel, which has been providing these services and now is suddenly deciding to cut them out. Uh, you know, but doesn't Israel have certain obligations in this case? I certainly think not. I think that it depends how you conceptualize the conflict. Basically, what we have is a conflict between two collectives, our collective and their collective. They define them as the enemy, and we should relate to them as the enemy. And you must decide which side you want to win. Or either you, you want your collective to win or their collective to win. But you can't have a hybrid policy whereby you want your collective to win, but you're constrained because of concern for individuals in the other collective. Basically, what you need is a policy of victory to try and uh, con uh, conquer, basically, or, or bring the other side to surrender. And I don't believe that will happen if, in the end game, you envisualize a large Arab collective remaining in Gaza. I believe the only way to defuse the, the solution is for Israel gradually to withdraw services so that the population knows that the services are going to be withdrawn and offer them alternative of large-scale, generous relocation loans in third-party countries, as I said, out of the circle of violence and out of the control of the people who have led them astray for, for years. What is going to change? Uh, I mean, we've, Gaza, Gaza has been under Arab control for a quarter of a century. That should give you some idea that it's not working. Right. So, you know, what, what does, first of all, what does the Palestinian Authority, what does Mahmoud Abbas hope to gain from, from cutting power to, to Gaza? I mean, he's already come out and attacked Israel, saying Israel is to blame for all of Gaza's woes, despite Israel listening to him cutting well, Gaza. Well, I, I'm certain not his spokesman, but I should imagine you know, that, that uh, he was, he's trying to win points vis-a-vis -vis Hamas and trying to establish uh, greater authority in Gaza, having been uh, uh, ejected from Gaza very unceremoniously uh, almost about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose that is what he's trying to do, as well as if you at least pay lip service to the two-state solution, you can't promote it if you've got a divided uh, Palestinian authority and, and uh, Hamas authority in Gaza, because how do you conduct negotiations with these two separate, uh, these two separate yeah. uh, entities? So even for, for uh, appearances' sake, if you want to appear for the Ameri new American, American administration as being prepared to accept a two-state solution, you have to present a unified front. Mm. And I don't think that uh, Abbas can do that as long as uh, uh, Hamas is in is control of Gaza. I see. Now, uh, moving on slowly, actually, I just want to, another quick touch, late, I would like to quickly touch upon this. Uh, do you think that this could lead to another war in Gaza, like in 2014? I suppose it could. I think that Israel should convey a very strong uh, message that the next war won't be like the last war, that Israel will go into Gaza and not worry about reconstruction, uh, reconstruction of Gaza, mm -hmm. but the deconstruction of Gaza. I, I, I think it should be quite clear to everyone now, after 25 years almost, 
that there will be no stable situation if Gaza remains intact. Right. What, why should there be? All right, well, with that, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin Chairman, for joining us today uh, and giving your expert uh, critique. Thank you for having me. Thank you.